Good day. We discussed the passive of turn one in 2021, section eight. First question. Two forces act on a point O as shown in the diagram. What are the magnitude and direction of the resultant force with respect to the positive X axis? So basically, you just do the force resolution and add both horizontal and vertical force component. So, so it should be no problem with this that you just perform the trigonometry and you can split both these two forces into X and Y component. So here is the equations and I hope you are clear how to get the equation. So the next thing is just perform the calculation. So horizontal force component will be equal to 21.79 Newton. Okay, as for the vertical component it will be about 35.32. So the next thing you perform the Pythagoras theorem and also the tangent to obtain the magnitude and the direction. So first of all is about the magnitude. We have 21.7879 uh, squared. So that will be equal to about 41 Newton. Okay, so it's either A or B. And as for the direction, this is a shift tangent of the Y component divided by the horizontal component. So the answer will be B, okay, 58 degree, 31 Newton. We proceed to question two. The variation of velocity with time of a cyclist who travels along a straight road is shown in the graph. So it's a VT graph. So what is the distance traveled by the cyclist from the starting position to the position that it finally stops? So we know that the area under the graph of VT is the distance or the displacement and we are asked to get the distance travel. So what we need to do is just obtain the area under the graph and make sure uh, you just add two of them. Okay, we know that the area for the second part is negative, but since we only consider about the magnitude, which is the distance, just get the area for both this uh, section. So the first one is uh, we have about 20 times 10 uh, divided by two is about 100 meter. And as for the second part, is a uh, 10 multiplied 5 divided by 2 is about 25 meter. So 100 plus 25 is 125 meter D. Okay, so this will be no problem for you. We move to question 3. Coefficient of static friction and kinetic friction for a rubber block on flat wood are the mu S and mu K respectively. What is the minimum horizontal force required for the rubber block of mass M starts to move from rest? So this is uh, tells you about the definition. When we want to start to move from rest, okay, of course we need to overcome the static friction first, which the answer should be mu s m g. Okay, if the reaction force, okay, if the roadblock is on the horizontal plane, so it's a mu r, where r is the m g. So answer is a. We proceed to question four. A ball move from p and passes through q on a frictionless surface, as shown in the diagram below. So which statement is true about the sum of gravitation, potential, and kinetic energies as the ball moves from P? So we can see it's uh, going down. So we know there's an interchange between the potential and the kinetic energy. So no matter what it is, okay, we know that uh, since all they mentioned about the sum, so the sum of energy should be remain constant and okay, remain unchanged throughout the motion of the ball. So answer is D. We move on to question five. The minutes of the minute's hand of a wall clock is at 0.2 cm and move from 12 to 4 o'clock. Okay, I think it should be o'clock. Okay, what is the angular displacement theta and the linear speed B of the minute's hand of the wall clock? So you can imagine how the clock looks like. Okay, from 12 to 4, it's about 20 minutes, over 60 minutes. So to get the radian, okay, the theta, okay, so we want to, we, we know that it's about uh, 20 minutes over 60 minutes. Or maybe we can just put as four over six, since uh, four over twelve. Since you know it's a uh, there's a one, uh, from one o'clock to twelve o'clock, so it will be about one third of three hundred sixty degree. Or we can also use straight away use two pi radian. Okay, so what we have is uh one over three times two pi, so it would be two pi divided by three, so it's about two point one radian. Okay, so the first uh answer for theta is 2.1 radian. And as for the linear speed of the minute's hand, so you need to look back the formula. Okay, we, we know that the speed is s over t, where the s is the distance traveled by the minute's hand. Okay, so since it is a circular motion, okay, we can use the formula of s is equal to r theta. Okay, s is equal to r theta. 
okay, where the time is uh, 60 minutes for one circular pump. Okay, so we know the radius is uh, 8.2 centimeter multiply two pi radius. Okay, so there's a one full cycle and then divide the, the period of one cycle is 60 minutes, which is about 3600 seconds. So this is uh, not based on uh, the motion from 12 to 4, but uh, rather I just choose from the general motion of the minutes hand. Okay, when you know that when it moved from 0 minute to uh, 50 time minutes, okay, that's how the minutes hand move around the clock. So just calculate the, the things, okay? So what we have is, so answer will be about 0 0.014 centimeter per second. So answer is A. Proceed to question six. A particle moves in a horizontal circular motion while another identical particle moves in a vertical circular motion with the same radius. Which are true about the motion of both particles? So overall, there are two variables being mentioned in the answer. Is the, one of them is linear momentum and the kinetic energy. So let's review the formula that the linear momentum is mv. So we know that in a circular motion, Linear velocity is always changing in terms of the directions. So this, the first thing that we could certain is that the linear momentum is varies. Okay, it's not constant. So the answer can be either C or D. Okay, and then as for the kinetic energy, I'm sure it's always constant for horizontal circular motions. And for vertical circular motions, if you check back my video, which is I really do a specific video for the vertical circular motions, there's something happen is that there's energy conversion between the potential energy and the kinetic energy. So for this case, the kinetic energy would be not constant for a vertical circular motion. So the final answer would be D. We move on to question seven. Two planets have masses of Ma and Mb and radius Ra, Rb respectively. Given that Ma is a one quarter of Mb and the escape speed at the surface of A is one third, the escape speed at surface D. This is the ratio of Ra to Rb. So I guess we can refer to the formula of the escape speed, which is given as square root of 2gm over r, where the mass and the radius are included in the formula. So we can see that the escape speed is one third, okay, at, uh, at surface A is one third of surface B. So first of all, we can start to rearrange the, the formula. Okay, one of them is that uh, we can see that uh, V e squared. Okay, if you rearrange the formula, multiply the r divided by m would be the constant in this case. Okay, so for here, we can apply the ratio, okay, for both uh, two planets. Then we have the Va, okay, the escape velocity at a squared ra over ma is equal to vb squared rb over mb. So from here, we can put in the values that has been mentioned in the question. First is that the MA is a one quarter of MB. In the other way, we can say that MB is four times of MA. So from here, what we can say is that MB is equal to four MA. Yeah, I think that would be a better way, an easier way to write it. And then the escape speed at A is one third of escape speed at B. So it means that at B, Escape speed is three, three times of A. Okay, so it will be three times A. So remember that the three will be in the bracket. So for here, we need to rearrange the formula to obtain the ratio of Ra to Rb. So for here, we can clearly see that I can cancel the Ba squared. So Ra of Rb will be equal to nine, three squared, nine over four. So nine divided by four will be equal to 2.25. So answer is C. Okay, we move on to question eight. A rectangular block with width 4 cm at length at cm is placed on the plan, which incline an angle theta as shown in the diagram. Which statement is true about the block? So we can see all the answer is mentioning the block, whether it will topple or not topple over. So first of all, we need to understand when does the block will topple. So if we look at the pivot point here, so we will see that the center of gravity here will do some torque. So what we can say is that, okay, if we draw the vertical line, okay, so if the center of gravity exceed this line, okay, for example, at this point, so we can say that it will cause an anti-clockwise torque, so the block will topple over on it. 
So for the block not to topple over, we need to make sure the center gravity is on the right of the vertical line, which uh, let's say we assume that the diagonal here is at 90 degree, okay, which is uh, parallel to the vertical line. We need to find out what is the angle. So from here, apply the max. So if we have theta here, okay, this would be the theta. And if this is 90 degree, so the theta would be in this position, okay, if you check back your max. So from here, we can do the calculation that we try to find out what is the angle, okay, when the diagonal is in parallel with the vertical line. So what we do is just perform the tangent, shift tangent, and 4 over 8, which is 0 0.5. So the angle will be about 26.56. So at this angle, the block is just enough, okay, just at the center. If it is more than the angle, it will topple over. So the first answer is incorrect because we can see that 25 is less than the angle mentioned. Answer B, it will not topple over because it has higher center of gravity, which is wrong. We know that with higher center of gravity, it will produce higher torque. C, it will not topple over because it will passes down through the pivot point. Okay, yeah, passes down to the pivot point. D, it will topple over if the length is placed on the plane, which incline at the same angle, which is wrong. We can see that if we interchange the length and the height, okay, if we recalculate the angle again, it will be 2. Then shift tangent, 8 divided by 4 is 2. So the angle is 63.43. This gives higher tolerance that the block will not topple over when we incline the plane again. So the final answer will be C, which is uh, the web passed down through the pivot point, means uh, pass, it press on the pivot point, so the block will not topple over. We move on to question 9. Which statement is not one of the assumption of kinetic theory of an ideal gas? So this depends on the reading. Collision considered to be elastic, correct? Volume of molecule is negligible compared to the volume of container, correct? All the molecule move with the same speed, no. Okay, it's a random motion, random direction. Okay, if you read back the textbook. There is no force between the molecules except during collision. Yes, okay, this has also been mentioned in the assumption. Answer is C. Proceed to question 10. The variation of stress with strength for material M and N is shown in the graph below. Which statement is true by the properties of M and N? So first option, M has greater value of Young modulus. Then we know that Young modulus is given as the ratio of stress and strength, which would be the gradient in this graph. So we can see that M has higher gradient means it has greater value of Young modulus, which is true. M and N have equal breaking point. Okay, I don't think so. Okay, we know that breaking point is here. So clearly there are two different points. M has greater proportional limit. So this is the proportional limit. Okay, so we can see that, um, yeah, maybe M has longer proportional limit. Yeah, and uh, this question would be, uh, would have two answers, I guess. And B, N has greater tensile strength. So tensile strength is the maximum stress before the breaking point. So you, we know that stress is the force over area. So M should have, should has the maximum, uh, should have the gradual tensile strength and N should have lower, okay, this is N. So answer is A, I think A is most probably correct and also C. Move on to question 11. Internal energy of a mole of an ideal gas of diatomic at 500K is 10.4 kilojoule. Which statement is true about the molecule? So we know the formula of U equal to F over 2 nRT. Uh, with one mole, it will be F over 2 RT. So if you put in the values, I guess it's really quite simple to, to know the answer. So just a brief counting. So we have the internal energy as 10.4 kilo times 2 divided by gas constant divided by the temperature, 500. Okay, so 500 should be the normal temperature that the degree of freedom for diatomic is 5. Okay, so answer is B. So it should be content three translational motion and two rotational motion as discussed in the video. So three degree of freedom is only occurs when the data molecule is placed in a very cold temperature. We move on to question 12. What is the specific heat capacity of copper if the molar heat capacity is 24.5 and you are given with the relative atomic mass of copper, 63.5? 
So the formula has been mentioned, but not so popular. Okay, if you don't remember, recall these two formula, MC theta and also the NC, and NC delta T. So from here, you can quickly derive the formula. Okay, quickly derive the formula. So we have the MC equal to NCM. So from here, we can know that, okay, if we want to find out the heat capacity, it will be uh, CM. Okay, so from here, we can quickly know it's divided by the molar mass. Okay, so just do the calculation here. So we have the heat, molar heat capacity in the 4.5. Okay, divide by the molar mass. So something you need to remember, this is in gram. Okay, and you can see the answer is in kg. So you need to convert the gram to kg divided by 0 0.0635. So answer will be 386 joule per kilogram per Kelvin. So in case you forgot to do the conversion, you can always check the answer. So we can see the answer is quite similar except the number or except the decimal places. So this is something finished that could be related to the unit conversion. So by looking at this kind of answer, you can remind yourself if there is any unit conversion involved in the question. We move on to question 13. The gas in a cylinder at constant pressure is heated and the gas expands from 0 0.2 to 0 0.35 meter cube. What is the work done by the gas? So constant pressure, PDB. Here we have the constant pressure at 1.6 times 10 power 5 Pascal. And we have the change in volume is from 0 0.2 to 0 0.35, which is 0 0.15. Okay, just times 0 0.15. So the answer is about 24 kilojoule. Answer is A. Next one, the increase in emission of greenhouse gases is said to be the main cause of global warming. So which is the greenhouse gas? So I guess it's quite obvious. It's a carbon dioxide donkey. Move on to the last question. Okay, a section of cavity wall made of bricks and air is shown in the diagram. So each layer has the same thickness and the inside surface of the cavity wall is warmer than outside surface. You can see that the inside is warmer than outside. So the expected uh, heat flow will be from the left to the right. When the steady state is reached, which graph shows the variation of the rate of heat flow with the distant x from the inside surface of the wall? Well, this is simple if you know the definition. Okay, we know that when it is a steady state, okay, we know that uh, it is about uh, between the thermal conductivity K and the temperature gradient. Okay, so the rate of heat flow should be the same no matter the material is, so it will be D. So that's all for the discussion and thank you for watching.